Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and uh, good evening. I hope you're well. And uh, thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday evening, this beautiful Thursday evening, 27th of July, 2023. Uh, for those joining on TikTok and uh, Instagram and Facebook, I want to thank you so much for joining. And uh, as usual, what I say, what is your news? And, uh, and if you got a news and you want a special news, just let me know what you news. Remember to like and share. Just share the video. Share the likes on, on Instagram. Uh, share it on uh, Facebook. But the most important thing on TikTok, what you got to do in order to actually see the show, you got to go onto the YouTube. And the YouTube is Silburn TV. And we can have a discussion. You can join in as well. Likewise for Instagram. Likewise for Facebook. Silburn TV on YouTube as well. Thank you so much. And what's your news? Let me know your news. And... Uh, Let's get going. It's going to be a great and a wonderful Thursday evening. Let's go. Okay, well, good evening, and uh, well, it's an uh, exciting day, exciting moment, and uh, you know, this morning I was in the park, and you know what I said this morning in the park? I said, it's a supernatural day, and uh, it's a supernatural moment, and when the, the supernatural um, God <laughs> and the supernatural being come together, it makes wonders, beautiful wonders, and, uh, and I bring in Sir Gary. Supernatural hey, one. Super. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing, man? I'm cool in the Malibu. You know, can't complain. You know, what I'm trying to say, um, somebody just a person named Bexley Evans said, "Jesus loves you unconditionally." I love that. That's, a, <laughs> that's, that's the first comment that came today. Jesus loves you unconditionally. Uh, so it's I encourage great to be reminded. Huh? It's great to be reminded. It's it's, it's great to be reminded. You know. And, uh, and, and, and one of, one of the things, uh, let me just get this. One of the things that, uh, that comes out of, you know, like when I, you know, in the mornings and I walk in the park and, uh, spend that time, I always remember, I always, I'm always reminded of one thing. And this one thing I always reminded of is that I always see a bird, Gary, and I always see a squirrel and I always see a fox and I always see the plants and I always see the trees. And you know what I found with them? They, they're the about? same ways. They operate the same way all these years. <laughs> they haven't changed, Gary. <laughs> same you way. Do you well, expect them to change? Well, that's the thing. You know, well, the, the, the message I got is that they all remain the same. But yet, uh -huh. we as human beings, sometimes we try to change. You know what I'm saying? Or people try to change us, if anything. What do you guys think? Will people try to change you from what you are into being something that you are not, you know, uh, as well? Mm. But, but Gary, it's a, 
it's a very interesting week and there's always interesting things happening um and one can pick up on all these different topics all these different things which are showing uh but what would you say is your uh your your top um news of this week if anything um what's the top what's the top i think i think nigel farage really i think he has really topped the bill for this week. <laughs> nigel farage yeah the, yeah i think he's he's the talk of the town really yeah but but it, it's it's a bit very interesting that he's a talk of the town because normally um you know person like nigel farage they are normally being censored they're normally being cancelled. They're normally being shut out. But he seems to be on the cutting edge of just shutting down persons. You know what I mean? Um, in light of what has happened, we spoke about it last week, but I, but it has been developing. You know, well, he's, he's not he's not just such shutting down persons. Yeah, he's shutting down one of the biggest banks, isn't he? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's one man. He's like David and Goliath, really, isn't he's he? Like it's like David and Goliath. <laughs> I like I like that one. It's like it's like David and Goliath. No, no, no yeah. that, that is that is that is very interesting. Um, being like David and Goliath, because um, David was was uh, was serious. You know what I mean? I'm um, going all the way for for Goliath. But but what we saw happen is that the the lady who was the head of NatWest, NatWest, yes, NatWest, the CEO or so, she. The, the 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 directors said um we have full confidence i always say this all the while well yes hey hey yes yes silburn is on tiktok now <laughs> yes finally after all these years i'm on tiktok somebody says silburn on tiktok because <laughs> they know I, I i i never wanted to go on tiktok what they, they finally got me on tiktok but the lady who was the head of the um dame allison's um she was the top of natwest her 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 bosses that her board said we have full confidence in her. We have full confidence in her. And Gary, every time I hear the word, we've got full confidence in anyone, like any politician, I know they're gonna go soon. <laughs> I know, I know they're gonna go soon. Anytime it goes like that, they're gonna go soon. Somebody said, yes, like David and Goliath, one man against a bank, which was IC3, Black Corporation Network. Um, you know. So 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 she went. The, she she went and apparently they said um there's going to be some sort of golden handshake if anything for her yeah i mean she had to go but, mm. I mean, when you really looked at what she did she had to go because she yeah. she contravened the gdrp didn't she well that that's a key thing and the, the information commissioner will come into the play because you have disclosed some serious information yeah right right so, but, so she mm. had to go. There, there was no argument with that. Mm. I mean, she had to leave. So, um, for for the board now to then say that they had full confidence in her, um, if you if you listen to what Nigel said today this morning, because I listened to him on um, GB News, mm. he he said because the board did what they did and said what they said they have to go also they have to go as well he's right they need to resign because if they're backing her on something that she broke is the law that she broke you know can you imagine you doing what she did at your workplace would so you survive that no no you wouldn't right and so therefore if even if you did what you did and your bosses came out and said, we stand behind um, Mr. Mr. Sidio. Yes. Then obviously, not only would you go at the end of it, but they also would have to go because you broke the law. It yes. wasn't that you contravened it. It wasn't that you brushed against it. You broke the law. And so you breaking the law and then a group of people standing behind you supporting that you broke the law they will have to they would be fired also yes yes and and also the um peter flavels um the forage account role leads now to 
Coates, bank boss, quit. NatWest, right. which owned Coates, said Peter Fal Flavel's resignation had been mutually agreed. So this is another person now was gone because I believe the 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 um the England what what do you call it? What what do you call the head of in the city of London, the mayor of the city of London? Now that's different from um that's different from um Sadiq Khan. He okay. weighed into uh, it as well from the city. Yeah. What did he say? Well, well, I think he said that the banks need to be really thinking about themselves and think seriously about this whole thing. And uh, let me, uh, I think I've got uh, a picture here as well that shows the whole thing. And um, and I got his picture, which is Forage account leads. Uh, bank boss quits, and that's what they're saying now. The boss of Coots, a prestigious private bank for the wealthy, has stepped down over the handling of Nigel Farage. Bank account closer because, of course, it is one thing for that twist who owns Coots, but Coots now have to go. And that picture there is Sir Peter. Um, Flavel. So, so yeah, Peter Flavel resignation had been mutually agreed and would be also immediate as well, Gary. So, so he's got to go. Mr. Flavel said how the bank handled Mr. Farage account had fallen below its high standards of personal service. You know? Can my bank close my account because of my views? And and there, there's a there's a cartoon which I had earlier and I, the cartoon shows about um uh, where where is it? I think I think I had a cartoon which I I showed and the cartoon showed um let me see if I can find it here. <laughs> it's it's a very interesting one. The cartoon said Natwest Cash Point Please enter pin code and views on Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please enter pin code and views on Brexit. Let's talk about views because I think I think I think this is this is going back to the whole thing with views, Gary. This is going back to the whole thing with views and persons and um, perception on different things. It and and it, it emanated a lot. From during the COVID period, where where it was going, I mean, everybody was going at it. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the the iRobots now are going to actually have have concerns about even becoming robots into this world because they, I don't think they're able to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can you imagine? You go to a bank now, put your money. Now, don't 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 get me wrong. Uh, if if a bank has some concerns seriously about someone doing something illegal, maybe drugs or what? I don't know. I don't even know if that uh, is, if you know. I mean, if somebody bring in the money to the bank, you know, you, you actually do your service. But when you start getting into the whole aspect of vetting, monitoring all these sort of person, you now become like CIA, MI6. It's a bit like when immigration bit where they're saying that um, people now will have to start to, uh, you know, check out person's immigration status and all those sort of things. You know what I'm saying? That is something which they were talking about at one point. We're in this world where people are not free to speak. And, and I believe what has happened with the banks, I don't think it's just the banks only. I think in an indirect sense, Gary, there's something else going on, but unfortunately, they got Nigel Farage. They got the wrong person. I think they got the wrong well, person, Gary. Well, listen, you have you on your program, and we have discussed um, on and off and in between the lines. I'm sure your listeners would understand that what is really happening, and as we've said, what is what's really happening is that there is a slow process of control going on yes and i think that yes they will make the mistakes but the mistakes that they make they it's only there so that they can know the reaction of the public or of the nation as they move along because yes we can see that they are gathering information mm. on us on people mm. Mm. Now it's it's not that Nigel Farage is um, has given them information, you know. Mm. 
It's not that he's going into them and giving them information. They're gathering information. They, they know it. him. He, he's a, he's they, a public official. They gather a public they, person. They, yes. And so, they, because he's a public person, yes, they, they they monitor him in as much as to say they know what he says. He's very open on his beliefs and and where he stands. And because and because he has now said things that one and two of them in the bank. They do not agree with him. Mm. Now, look at it this way, Sil. It's not the bank per se, you know, that is... Because the bank, the, the institution is not alive in, in that sense. It's individuals that run the bank. So because well, individuals now do not agree with, with other individuals, they will then put a mark against them and in the case of nigel close accounts J just close accounts because they're not in agreement with the individuals who are running the institution it's not the institute it's not the are you understanding what i'm saying Sid? it's not yeah, it's not it's, it's not say yeah it's not it's it's not that it's not the bank it's not it's not the the inner workings or the mech or, or the the mechanism of the institution that's against him. It's the individuals who run the bank that's against him. Because if the individual was in favor of what Nigel was saying, they wouldn't bother him because they're saying it's 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 it, it, it doesn't affect him. For instance, for yeah. arguments. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, why hasn't why hasn't anybody in Nat West said anything? Well, Gary, Gary. Nat West, the, the the top lady from Nat West, she's the one who resigned. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I thought. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, all right. Why hasn't anybody else in another bank said anything? You mean other banks? Yeah. No, separate and no, apart, no, separate and apart from Coots or Natwes. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. now, now, Nigel, Nigel has not divulged if he has other accounts. Let's just let's just surmise he does because some people do have more than one account. Yes, especially yes. especially if you're a wealthy individual, they always mm -hmm. say, "Don't put all your money into one into one into one bank," because obviously yes. there is an insurance scheme that says. You insured up to eighty-five thousand pounds into an account, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, so let's say that he has several accounts, not only yeah. in Coots, but he may have it in NatWest itself. You may have it in Bartlett's. You may have it in Lloyd's, in TSB. You know, he may have a a bill and society account. Yes. But the point is, why hasn't any other bank said anything? They're quite. They are quite quiet. If you if 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 you look on the whole scheme of things, the only mm. bank that is saying anything at all at this moment is Nat West, because they are in the fire. They are in the fire. In line. Because they're in the fire. So what? But all the other banks yeah. are quiet. So what you what you're alluding to is the fact that they're all in it together, but unfortunately they got the wrong man. Well, yeah. Nigel yeah. Farage. I, I think mm. so. I think so. If it because because it is coming out in drips and drabs, that yes. that's what they've done to other people. Is only that other people are not as well known or nobody knows these people. But it's happened. Yes. It's been happening. Yeah, because uh, because what Nigel has found out as well is that he's starting now to help other people, other people who have been having a hard time with banks closing them down. There's a guy. Um, I think he said he had about two thousand or three thousand, and they, and I think he said they just closed him down for some reason or so. And I think Nigel is yeah. sort of helping him. So I guess Nigel is now out there helping other persons because I believe what they're saying is that even though Nigel, it is alleged that maybe has fallen below the level, but they said many people have fallen low below be, below Nigel level. They have also they they still have their account, but it was very clear. It was his Brexit views. <laughs> it's Brexit. That is the whole thing. It's the left. It's the whole um, that mentality of 
not wanting people to be able to say what they're saying. I'm sure if it was, um, and because of the fact that he was very anti anti the, the vax as well, Gary. So all these different factors paint, come into play. But I think the most important thing and the most important lesson right there is that is somehow people will have to don't sit on their laurels and sit back when these injustice has come to them. They have to somehow speak out. And, and I believe as they speak out, Gary, they're going to get lots of people coming out as well and say, hang on a second, this has happened to me as well. Because in a breakdown of how it unfolds, 29th of June, Farage says on Twitter, his bank account will be closed for commercial reasons. That was it. Commercial reason. He did not name the bank. But he said he has been a customer since 1980. 4th of July, BBC report, Mr. Farage fell below the threshold need to hold on to accounts with codes. That was the information the lady gave to that BBC reporter trying to take the guy down. Now they're getting into his financial, into his personal bits. Even the lady on Sky, I forget what's her name, was actually questioning Nigel to say, hang on a second, have you got enough money still? And Nigel said, I'm not going to answer that question. And then he said to her, have you got enough money working at Sky? You know, and you shouldn't ask me those questions. 18th of July, Nigel Fraud obtained a coach report which said he did not align with the bank values. So he started, so this is, this is meticulously um, giving us ways how to do certain things. So he got that information. I don't know if he got it through freedom of speech or somebody on the inside, let him know. Um, and then 19th of July, the Telegraph report, Dame Allison sat next to the business editor, Simon Jack, at the charity dinner the day before the BBC's report. So therefore, they were actually sharing information. Then, yes. then, then Dame Allison now apologized for the for deeply inappropriate comments and said the document does not reflect the view of the bank. That is what she's saying because she got caught and therefore it could be the view of the bank. That's why Nigel is, is correct. All of them need to go. 21st of July, the BBC updated the story to make it clear the report had come from a source. Who was that source? Dame Allison. Simon Jack and Deborah Turner's chief executive of BBC News apologized to Mr. Farage. 25th of July, Natwe said Dame Allison made a serious error, but the, full, the board had full confidence in her. And this was it, Gary. This is it. If the board had full confidence in her and she was acting, are we trying to say that she acted by herself? No. Gary. Exactly. No. There we go. Did she act by herself? The, mm. And that's why I believe the board needs to go. Yes. And that's what Nigel is pushing for. The board needs to go. So she resigned now on the 26th. Mr. Farage called on the whole Natwest board to go. Coates boss Peter Flavel stepped down. So therefore, it is, it is tumbling down when it comes on to that. And, and I don't know if you have any account. I know you have accounts all over the world, Gary. So I don't know if you got Coates and Natwest as well. <laughs> if, if no, gonna... my, my, my accounts are offshore. Your cars are offshore. We're in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I love, I love man. I love, I love man, not woman. <laughs> but, 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 but I think the key lesson here, and 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 for persons as well, if you're listening and if you know about what is happening regarding banks closing down, has anybody ever on social media here ever had your bank close your account? for whatever reason. I know in Jamaica, many people always complain that if your bank is, if your account is dormant and people in the diaspora are always cussing these banks in Jamaica to say that they shut them down uh, as well, Gary. So, um, but this, this whole thing is because of views. Your views is now being taken into consideration. Your views, now they're watching your view because Gary, everything is out there. If somebody type in my name, on Google and stuff like that. What's my views on certain things? I'm sure, I'm sure AI will find these things because everything, there's a there's a, a footprint, a social media footprint out there for everyone now. That is why when people are now doing their, uh, uh, what do you call it, their interviews for certain places, the, the people who are interviewing them are now checking their CV and beyond their CV, checking also their social media footprints 
there's a girl that came came to approach me some time ago, about a year ago, to say that she in, she was she did an interview on my show, and she said some things, which she she's going to do a an interview with a place which she mentioned about, and she wanted if I could pull the show. <laughs> you know, really? Yeah, she wanted if I could pull the show. I I, I mean, I I mean, I mean. I'm, I'm I'm not gonna pull show um just like that. You know, people need you need to be you need to own up. People need to own up to the things that they say these days because it's going to be your social footprint there. So 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 again, she wants you to, to pull the show for what? Because um a couple of things that she said, um she it's it is going against <laughs> going against the company which she's um she's going to going for an interview with you know <laughs> i you think see, something with you see yeah, this, uh, you know, that that is the that's the sad thing about it now yeah i mean what is freedom of speech and and what is freedom mm. what is freedom of speech and what is freedom obviously freedom of speech we do not have and we in the West who say that we're free, we're not really free. Yeah. Because, because if you cannot, like in the case of Nigel Farage, look at yes. that now. If, yeah. you're, if you're not free to express yourself. Freely. The, if you're yeah, freely, freely. Mm. Then, then you're not free at all. You're not free to do anything. And that is... Uh, sadly, that's that is really coming over into the public sphere because if individuals have to be careful of what they say because they're going for interviews and what companies are doing and known to be doing anyway yeah. is that if you yeah. do have a social account or such, they are checking you out before <laughs> long before probably you um you're called in for the first interview anyway. Yeah. You're right about that. More than likely, they have checked. <laughs> they have checked you already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have checked you already. So, so ladies and gentlemen, if, if for instance you have applied for a job and you're not hearing anything for you, maybe they have actually checked your social media account and say check your your stance and your political views or your homophobic views. People are homophobic these days just because they say they are straight, Gary. Just because someone said they are straight, they are deemed to be homophobic, and that's how things are now. You know, you're gonna if if you say if you say you don't like the rain, you like the rainbow a particular way, you're now deemed to be homophobic. That's how things are. The level yeah. of tolerance is lacking in these days. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's not. I mean, it's going to get worse. This is just the tip of the iceberg, you think and I'm so? sure that it has happened. Well, as we know, it has happened more than once to individuals. Who um, these are more than most individuals who are not really significant to yes. society yes. as far as they are concerned. Yes, but it's going to happen again. Yes, it's going yes. to happen again. Still, it, it may take mm. another month, two months, six months, a year, but it's going to happen again. Yeah. Well, let's. We 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 are grateful for Nigel and grateful for. The stance that he took. Many people were thinking he was barking up a, a tree and they were sort of let him out, letting him go on his his chase, but it is happening now. And I think his his support came when he went into the house, when he went into the parliament, when Jacob Reese Mogg brought it up and actually flagged it up. And what Nigel said, this is something that Nigel said. Nigel said that he's normally deemed as the the person that the politicians like to stay away from but he was very surprised and he was very touched by the amount of politicians from across the board who actually came out and support him for for exactly what has happened um so yeah but anyway another, another thing also gary and i know we have talked about this many times and we got to talk about it again because we got to keep keeping our fingers on this one british gas they say anger as energy bill change leads to record profits you know, anger again. The banks are at the, the, the bank. Listen, I, I, I just saw a report earlier today and they were saying 
um, people are feeling it from the housing, people are feeling it from the interest rate. But I say, let us talk to those who are who are getting who are not feeling it. You know who they went to? Guess who they went to, Gary? Who? The bankers. <laughs> <laughs> the bankers, right? The bankers not feeling it. Okay, British gas anger as energy bill change lead to record profit is there. There has been an angry reactions to British Gas reporting record half year profit as millions of households continue to struggle to pay their energy bill. Radam, but I've but, seen that in but, um, yeah. but but um Silborn. Yeah. Silborn. Yes. And to the rest of your um, listeners and those mm. who are participating in, in this debate tonight. Is, yes. is that is that something that the papers really should be should be talking about? I mean, it, well, yes, but are we surprised? No. Are we surprised? No. It's the same thing. With, I mean, if the if Shell, BP, Esso, yeah, last year they spoke about making record profits when 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 um, petrol or oil was was going down mm -hmm. prices were still at the at the very highest level for months and mm -hmm. they were, and and they were making record profits at the expense of the consumer so so yeah. so what what's happening now where the gas is concerned it's not it's it's not a surprise i think i think they yeah. should be ashamed no hold on they yeah. should, these people should be ashamed that they are telling the whole world and telling and rubbing it in the face of the British consumer that they've made record profits half a year. They should be ashamed of themselves because yes. they know to some extent that look how many households today are suffering. Yes. Look how many households I'm sure they've taken to court. They've turned they've turned the gas taps off for them. All because at the expense of them making record profits. No, no, it's it's not right. And and you know what is going to happen next week as well. What's going to happen next week is that the big belly man, who I call the Bank of England governor, there's a possibility of another interest rate rise. There's a strong okay. possibility. Uh, but what they're actually trying to say to cushion people, they are saying they believe it won't be as much as how it has been. But that doesn't mean anything because really and truly, people would love to hear that the interest rate dropped instead of go up because a lot of people are now coming off of their, their, their interests only and they're going on to these different trackers and all these different new um, deals. So people are in, in quandary to a certain extent. And, and if, I, if I look at what they're talking about with British Gas, it was not it is Gary, it is 969 million, ladies and gentlemen, 969 million after price cap rises allowed it to make more money from household bills. 969 million pounds. Almost a billion US dollars. Regulator of Gem said the bumper results were a one-off due to the changes. Such a such pathetic. Okay, okay, just a one-off. It's just a one-off. Campaigners said the profits were a further sign of Britain's broken energy system. And I believe that the Prime Minister, they need to come in there. And I keep saying all the while, they need to come in there and say, listen, guys, we've got to sort this out. You know? Because they said the profits posted will be greeted with disbelief by those struggling through the crisis. Disbelief, Gary. Simon Francis, a coordinator of the Enfield Pro Poverty Coalition. People well, are struggling, man. My... Yeah. People are struggling. Yeah. It's wicked. Height, the height of wickedness, Gary. <laughs> the height of wickedness. Well, and obviously, but, there, yeah. there are some people who don't think so. Mm. You know, they are they are um, lying in the pockets of the investors. That yeah. is another problem. And their shareholders, and, and the yeah. government, yeah, and the government will not do anything about it. They will not do anything about this. 
And of course, because they oppose any sort of windfall tax, I think Labour is talking about they're going to go for a uh, windfall tax, if anything like that. Um, in in 30 of June, um, the, the oil companies said, stay high. Their bills are there. Uh, the Centrica, who warns energy bills will stay high for a foreseeable future. Stay high. You know? Energy bills are likely to stay high for the foreseeable future, according to the boss of the company that owns British Gas. Centrica Chief Executive Chris O'Shea said he believed the worst of the energy crisis is over, Gary. Hallelujah. Just 969 million. Piece of cake, guys. 969 million. Bumper profit. Don't worry. It won't be too so hard. This is wickedness, Gary. We have to call it what it is. It is wickedness at the highest level. Scamming, I don't say in Jamaica, it's chopping, scamming, chopping, whatever, like that. Now, that's now that's what Jamaicans was that's that's the real scamming going on. Wickedness, man. You see, you see what, what is happening in other countries, it's going to mm. happen here. There is going to be uh, um, <laughs> it's only so much people will take. Mm. It's only so much people will take. And it's only going to be a matter of time before the consumer rebels. Yes. Now, now on, on, on other debating stations and such in the UK, you're not hearing that. I mean, on the debate shows, on the news, when, they are, when certain people are asked certain questions, they're not going to say that. But we're mm -hmm. saying it on the Seymour Sidio show. Yes, <laughs> call it, call it, call a spade a spade. You know, yeah. call a spade a spade. When things start go wrong, people will remember what we've said. Yes, it's it, it's all a matter of time before, um, uh, um, you know, things will be. It's not only climate change. People are going to go out there and talk about yeah. and lie down in the road and 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 placard and. And block roads no yeah when when people when it hits people hard enough mm. to know that to know that um the gas is making record profits bumper profits but yeah record profits when people can't even they, they they don't want to heat their homes you know the, the the water companies making record profits but going bankrupt. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard of anything like that? Yeah. Thames Water going into receivership, but they've made record bumper profits. What kind of rubbish is that? That's foolishness. Yes. You know. Then you got the electricity companies. They're making record bumper profits, but they're having problems. Something is wrong. Something is going on when these companies. When, when banks in recent years, not so much now, even though we've, you know, they've said they've, they've been bailed, but even banks making record bumper profits, but going bankrupt and the, and the government having to come in and bail them out. What's going on? You know, yeah. there, there needs to be people out there that's in these sectors to come out now and talk. They need to make people be aware that something is going on. Yeah. Yeah, some something is something is going on, and 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 you're right about this, and uh, I don't know what people think, uh, and you know, the question is, how much can people take? It, it's it's like um, there's a program I was listening. Well, this was a Jamaica program, and they say it's like your <laughs> the person used the example of a pressure cooker, and he said, do you know what happened when the pressure cooker um, cover goes off, and it's not there, it's, or it's not done properly, bam. It's going to be a massive explosion, if anything like that, Gary. And uh, and and I believe that the UK is on the threshold of something. Um, I don't know how positive it is, but to the likes of France, where people cannot actually take it anymore. Sadi Khan is bringing you guys twelve pounds fifty for hard working people to hit them again. The Ulez guy which is so wrong, increasing that. 
The big belly man, which is the Bank of England governor, do not like it when people get more money in their pocket because he claimed that there's going to be more purchasing power. So he's going to increase inflation, increase interest rate to somehow take the money back at the same time. And all of this, at every time, it is hitting the poor people. It is hitting people who, and actually, it is hitting the people who are actually keeping the economy afloat. That's what is happening as well. The oil companies making bumper profits, the oil companies, and actually saying it is not as bad, even though I made 969 million half yearly profit, Gary. Half yearly profit. Half yearly profit. 969 million pounds. And that is just one. Right? And right all this time they're blaming Ukraine and blaming um, uh, Russia and, and, um, and, and Zelensky. I mean, Zelensky is making so much money now. Zelensky, you know what Zelensky wants to do now? He's, so, he's, he's going high. The guy want to copyright his name, Gary. <laughs> Are you serious? He want to copyright his name, Zelensky. I wouldn't be surprised if he copyright him wearing this shirt all the while. Guys, these listen, man. These listen. People need to rec people people need to wake up and understand. These guys don't mean you no good. These guys don't mean you any good. The lack of leadership, effective leadership in the world, is astounding. And I won't touch on Jamaica yet. I want to touch on Jamaica a little bit after this. The lack of do, effective leadership. You see, the point is, do our, do, do our listeners really know what's going on? Do, are they aware? Are they aware of what is happening? That needs to be asked. Gary, you see, what is happening is this. A lot of people don't even have time to listen to the news. A lot of people are actually trying to make ends meet. You understand what I'm trying to say, Gary? And that yeah, is what is yeah. happening. A lot of people are just trying to, they're, they're, they're tipping over. So sometimes they're not at the time to analyze certain things to see what is really happening. Hi, how are you, Ronnie? You know? Well, people have to wake up to this whole thing. You know, I'll always, I'll always say, and people, people tried this before, and I don't know if they tried it still. One week, don't go to Shell. One week, don't go to British Gas, BP. One week, just somehow, you know, you know. I, I must commend the, the 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 people for the climate change, you know, because they are consistent. They remind me of the French. <laughs> they are consistent, Gary. You know, what I'm trying to say. Very consistent with their their quest, you know, which is very, you know, what can I say? But can I um, say anything? You know, I mean, it, you see, you see, the they're doing what they're doing, but there isn't anybody. We are saying it. I believe yeah. we are saying. It. But really, really and truthfully, Sil, anybody could ask, well, who is Sil Bon? Mm, mm. Who is Graham? Mm. I mean, we can we could forever always point out certain things that does not seem right. But because because we are little Mises in the corner squeaking, <laughs> you know, then then you know nobody really is going to take is 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 going to take any any mind when when somebody as big as farage begins to say something yes then they will take notice but you know gary it points back to the effective voice of a community right the True. effective voice of a community if a community do not have a voice and it is disjointed that is what will happen. And I speak for the black community, if anything like that. You know, if there's a strong voice, and that, and, and Nigel has a voice because he has massive support. He's got the Brexiters behind him. 
<laughs> if you go on his page, you, 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 and anything he says, some people are actually saying now he's the one that run GB News. Anything gonna break or whatever like that? He says, tune in tonight on GB News, and I tell you what the latest with BBC. Tune in tonight with on GB News, and I tell you the latest with Coot Banks. Tune in tonight on on GB News, and I tell you the latest with um, NatWest. So he uses it, but at the same time, it pulls people. Because people, yeah. people like a fighter. People like an underdog at this time. And that is what is happening. Nigel is not part of the system, even though he's a part of the system. He seems like an underdog. You know? And, and that's the thing. So therefore, th it is clear that there need to be voices that will rise up and stand up to the challenge at a time like this. Very important. So anyway... Yes, yes, that's what was the bit regarding the... Uh, let's hope that somehow some good sense will prevail to see if there can be some clawback on these pounds which have been made by these bumper profits by the banks, bumper profits by the oil company, bumper profits by the petrol companies as well. Because that's the time now where they're going to be telling us about their... They're half yearly profit, and there's more to come. So watch your space. It's going to be hot, Gary. It's going to be hot again. They say, amid blistering heat wave, July is virtually certain to be the world's warmest mountain record, say scientists. They're saying we're going to have another heat wave. Are you ready for it, Gary? Are you guys ready? No. Are you ready well, for it? I don't mind it. To tell you the truth, I mm. really wouldn't mind it. Yeah. I really wouldn't mind the heat. Um... Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know we've got another month or two of nice, nice weather. I really wouldn't mind it, you know. Yes, yes. I would, yes. I would welcome it. I, I would welcome it. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's hope it's not as hot, hot, hot as the last one. Because when it's hot like that, Gary, you're looking for a beach. When you're looking for a beach to go to. <laughs> You know, to balance it off. You know what I'm trying to say? And there's no beach. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're going to do a makeshift thing in your garden. And if you do a makeshift, if you do a makeshift thing in your garden, after a while, they're going to say, we're going to stop using the, the, the hose. And then they're going to charge you again. And you get locked up in a cell. And you burn up. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want you to happen, you know. Huh? I said they want it to happen. They want they want the heat wave. They want the heat Some wave. Who want the heat wave? Yeah, they want it, man. They said they said, uh, but but it's very interesting what is happening in Europe as well because of all these fires. You know, they say, and the UN chief said the the planet is entering an era of global boiling. Gary, that's what they say. Yes, is that hell on earth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I really thought I've been thinking, you know, well, I know this is not a religious program anyway, but um it's a program of life, Gary. I was I was thinking still that yeah. when when you think if if people should really turn to the book of Revelation, I'm not saying it's any of the seals or the bowel judgments. I don't think it's that. Yes. But but if you look at at the book of revelation and what is to happen mm. and what is happening now if mankind is crying out for the heat now based on what's going to be coming at a particular time in the history of this world then you know avoid it i would tell anybody avoid the judgment of god because it's not going to be pretty really this anyway. is so what you're saying, this is going to be like paradise in comparison to the judgment if one is not living right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Well, I echo it for you then. It's a program of life. <laughs> U.S. President Joe Biden described climate change as an existential threat. Existential threat. And that no mm. one can deny the impact of climate change anymore. Some experts believe that July might well be the warmest month. <laughs> Ready for this? Ready for it? In on. the past 120,000 years. <laughs> 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 you know? 
In the past 120,000 years, researchers are not surprised that July is set to break the current record for the warmest month as there have been plenty of indications in recent weeks that the world is seeing far greater levels of heating. The world's warmest day occurred on July the 6th and the hottest 23 days ever recorded all this month according to the Copernicus Climate Change Service. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, look out. There's going to be a heating period coming up soon, they say, you know, and um, and 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 that's there's a world set for the hottest July on record. What do you say about that? Are you ready for the hottest day? I must say that during the, the recent um, cold heat spell and I did my walking still, of course, I was able to put on my shorts. And um, show my chicken leg, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and but there's there's in the park there are some couple of trees there. There's some couple of trees. Uh -huh. These trees were. It was some cool shade, man. All we wanted was a, a nice cooler with ice and some beer. <laughs> beer is the only thing I could think of. You know, some nice um, red stripe beer. Well, well, for Leicester it would be ice. Um, Ine King. Leicester like Ine King because it's green. Don't like anything red. <laughs> is this he's still in Jamaica? He's still in Jamaica, Manvita. Is it? I, yeah, I saw where that he has, yeah, that, that he went out for holiday out there. Yes, yes. He sent me a video not so long ago showing um that a lady he went to the tax office in St. Anne's Bay, and there's a lady in the section where the parking was, and he said, She know him. She said, I know you, man, I know you. The union blogging God. <laughs> So they're, <laughs> so oh they're, they're in, put, in point to the camera I say, see, and make sure to be able to self, you know, call them and watch you all over the world, you know. But Gary, um, listen, there, there was something interesting happening in Jamaica, and, and I, I, I don't have the video for it, but but I but I have the notes to a certain extent, and and it was Mark Golden. I'm not going to talk about the duppy business. You, you heard about the duppy the duppy thing. I don't you think about so, you know. You didn't hear about the doppy one. How <laughs> no. did that go? How did that go? The, the doppy one was was uh, <laughs> Jamaica. Jamaica is is a is a joke in a sense. Jamaica is like a jam flick series. But the other day he was at a, a one of those political rallies. You know, in the political rallies, it's charge up and everything. And he said, "People oh. in 2011, I want you to vote the same way as we voted." And because win and bringing this guy named Peter King to be the MP, Ray, Ray, Ray. And then he, and then I think somebody said, and the dead too. And him say, everybody and the dead too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, and he said, and he said, are we in power? <laughs> power, because you know, PNP mean power and JLP is shower. No, JLP is shower, uh -huh. sorry. PNP is, is power. And, uh, you know, he got his foot in his mouth right there, and uh, a lot of people I know, you know, want censoring him and saying that he should ret retract. He retracted it, but I, I did a little survey and I found that a lot of countries in the world have issues with dead people voting. <laughs> I mean, Biden, but, but mm. uh, well, go on, go on. But I think I mean that's nothing new. That's nothing new amongst people. I mean, that has always been that's always been there, hasn't it? Well, I, I think I think the issue is that it's a narrative which has been there, and it is something which may happen in different places. And and of course, they say it happened in Jamaica already. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, dead people do not vote, but it's the names of dead people that somehow resurrect itself, you know. Um, so what what, what is happening? What but I look at it in a different way, and I said, you can't really have any fear of dead people voting if the electoral register is is um, vetted by the different people or so, because they got to cross-reference it, isn't it, Gary? They got to cross-reference these things. So, really and truly, I apologize. It was a jest thing, you know. I saw it as a jest, but it is how I see people are going at it, you know? Because if it was JLP said it, I believe the PMP would have got it the same way, you know, because it's a silly period now whereby everybody's it's everybody's looking forward to the election. And I think that is what is happening. Because the lady got her donkey. So they're calling Andrew Honest the donkey man. And, and they're calling um 
Mark Golan, Marky Jesus. You understand that? Because resurrecting the dead. <laughs> you know? And bro God, bro God. So it, it's a very interesting thing. But lots of people sending me things. And I, I just, I don't really get into it too much. Because really and truly, it is a, it's a high level of distraction. And we can miss out on the main, the main point. But something which happened recently. Um, and it was yesterday where the, the opposition are complaining that there's an abuse of democratic governance because the PNP object the constitutional amendment to extend the DPP's tenure. Now, the DPP, ladies and gentlemen, is the director of public prosecution, right? And that lady is Paula Llewellyn. And um, according to the constitution, because I, I had it up, the constitution said, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I look for the constitution, in the constitution at at because i got two aspects of it from the constitution it says at 96 section 96 the tenure of the director of public prosecution acting director of public prosecution is that subject to the provisions of such subsections four to seven inclusive of the section the director of public prosecutions shall hold office until he attain the age of 60 years. Now, Gary, when the constitution was done, I don't think anybody was expecting a woman to be the um, the DPP because in the constitution, which was done many years ago, it says he, he. So really and truly, there's a commission that is dealing with the constitution reform in Jamaica. So I believe that right. is something that they're going to deal with because they're working towards Jamaica to become a republic. So therefore, the constitution will have to amend accordingly. But they got Correct. to also amend these bit that says he and say he, she, or whatever like that until they attain the age of 60 years. So it is 60 years for someone to be the DPP. But I think Correct. she want, they want her to go on further. So what they have done, they have amended the constitution, Gary, and uh -huh. make it to be 65. But the, the jinx in the world thing is and what the PNP is actually now saying is that they actually didn't do it right. And, and, and I just break it down here. What, what they're actually saying, and if I can read, what the PNP is actually saying, I just read it here. And this is for education. This is just for education. It says, in a statement on Monday, the PNP said it was brought to their attention that the Andrew Holness led government intends to bring a bill to parliament today. You know? Uh. <laughs> And, yeah. and and what has happened now is that they have moved it because they have a majority, Gary. They got a majority and they don't. So the government side have a majority of MPs. So they went ahead and moved it. But the constitution said this. This is what the constitution said in 96, uh -huh. section 96. And ladies and gentlemen, listen to it. It says, subject to the provision of sub subsection 4 to 7, inclusive of the section of DPP, shall hold office until he, she attain the age of 60 years, provided that, listen, A, he, she may at any time resign his office. That is similar to the DPP here in the UK. He's 59 years of age and he wants to retire. But the DPP in the UK, this is the guy I believe who took over from Keir Starmer, the age of retirement, according to the public um, civil servants is 65. That was increased. But he resigned. But in B now it says, the Governor General acting on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, listen to this, acting on the recommendation of the Prime Minister after consultation with the leader of the opposition may permit a director of public prosecution who has attained the age of 60 years to continue in office until he she has attained such later age not exceeding 65 years as may before the dpp attained the age of 60 years has been agreed between them so what what so what you're seeing right there gary is that there should have been some um discussion there should have been some discussion with the opposition and that's where the opposition is um having a go at them at um someone was saying to me a lawyer person was saying maybe it's ultra virus but um but anyhow so that's it there and that's the latest in Jamaica. You know, there are lots of things happening in Jamaica, but that's the latest. Bangarang, which started in Jamaica. That's the latest Jam Flick series. A guy named Mad Cobra got arrested for drugs in America. Um, 
I guess he's gonna be doing a Buju Banton as well, you know, as well. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you but, know. But my question is, why are these people mm. always trying to do something when when they know they're gonna be caught? If other if if others, you know, haven't haven't gotten away with it, why do they think that they're going to be that they're gonna get away with it? It's it's yes. it's just ludicrous, man. It's yeah. It, it's mind-boggling how something. <laughs> and 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 the other thing also, which is which is making people wonder, who you can believe, Gary, is the whole hoo-ha about the diplomatic spat with America wanting to get a married a gay couple in the in the embassy. Um, the, the the that's the. <laughs> The, the Minister of Information is saying not no gossip. There's no problem. There's no issue. America was saying something. You just don't know who to believe, Gary. You have no idea who to believe. You just, yeah, you don't know who to believe. You don't know who to believe. That's all. You don't know what to tell the truth or not. Michael Manley said this. They lie on Monday. They lie on Tuesday. They lie on Wednesday. They lie on Thursday. They lie on Friday. They lie on Saturday. And he said, God help them. They lie on a Sunday. <laughs> 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 and that doesn't mean for the JLP. It means to say they lie, they lie, they lie, they lie. To a point, this guy named Andre Stephen, he has a show on him called their Prime Minister Eli. <laughs> Eli. Eli. You need to watch that guy named Andre Stephen. Eli. I, I tune into that guy there. To, uh, he, he gives, if you tune into him and listen, watch it, like, of course, not late in the night um because of the time difference but in the morning sometime i'll tune in and get what's the latest thing in jamaica uncensored and not um camouflage and so like that but yeah but anyway that's it ladies and gentlemen it's been a great day gary any last word well it's just it's just you it's just for you and um at least your listeners and those who are in the bushes there watching in the bushes you know <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it's just that you know be mindful of what's going on listen yes don't be yes. hoodwink you don't, know, be, don't hoodwink. be hoodwink because there's people out there who thinks that we are not listening and not yes. only that they think we're silly they think we're stupid yes. they yes. think we don't have any sense yes but you see what gives them the impression that we don't have any sense is that whenever they do what they do there's no reaction at all from us. Yes. And I think that we need to react. I think the public really needs to be heard now because they're coming back to us for election. Oh, yes. And the thing oh, yes. about it is that we are putting these guys back in every four years and we're not mm. we're not challenging them at all. Yes. So then so in between the four years, they don't have to do anything. They just collect their salary. And and travel the world and that's it. Yes. And 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 you're talking you're talking uh generally I mean in a feedback. Gary, you're talking generally politicians, i.e. Uh, Jamaica, uh USA as well. Yeah. Sorry, Jamaica and England. That's what you're referring to, Gary, yeah? Yes. I mean I, I think it happens around the world. Mm. But mm. but but for us in particular, Jamaica and mm. here in the uk and if you want to put an add-on into that the, the us because many yeah. of us we have families there our parents are there we have brothers and sisters there we go there um just as often as we would go to the west indies so we are very much affected yeah. you know by what happens um in these two places across the pond so we've got to we've got to really yeah. be very astute we can be astute we can be very careful with our own finances <laughs> if you notice you know you can't get a penny sometimes out of people yeah you can't because they've got it but when mm -hmm. it comes to looking at things on a national basis yes you know generally talking now it, it they go on as if it doesn't really affect them but it, it's going to affect us Mm. Everything that these politicians um, um, do affects us. And what, what they've got to all, also realize, Sil, and what you've got to also press home to your listeners, is that almost every day new laws are being passed. 
you know, you know, you know, you mentioned about new laws. I mean, it, it's just even recently whereby <clears throat> not even new laws, but even immigration, whereby there's an increase for persons to apply for visas to come to the UK because that increase is going to go into the, the funding of the public sector workers and also mm -hmm. increase in the NHS surcharge, surcharge. And that's why I'll encourage right. people as much as possible to follow the show. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get these arguments about man and woman and all that sort of thing than the sus business. And, you know, what we're talking about is some of those life-changing things politically and what can happen to you what you need to be aware of because and you know what is very important gary even the voting bit we've got to be so strategic with our voting and i don't think it is about what you got what can you do for the black vote i think the black vote need to be strategically spread when i say spread you need to go right. into is that my phone gary is that you oh, yeah. In, no, in, no. Yeah, one need to go into different sectors and get involved in the electoral process. That is so important in the UK, for argument's sake. Get involved in that electoral process whereby you have a say as to the persons who will um, run and who will stand up. Because there's an election which is on the air, which is in, 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 in coming up soon, election in Jamaica. An election in the UK, and of course, Trump is on his way. Well, I don't know if he's back, but he's on his way to want to be back. Yeah, um, UK change the laws, and now you require I. Uh, someone just say UK change the laws, and now you require ID to vote. I got to also check that out as well. You know, you know, Gary, you know, require ID to vote for the UK. Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? Well, yeah? I mean, is that I, correct? yes, yes, I, I have heard something like that, but yeah. but. Sorry. What I'd just like to also appeal to the London voters of down there. <coughs> vote out Sadiq Khan. Yeah, I want to, yeah, vote out Sadiq. Uh, you need to get rid of that guy. I'm telling you, he's got he's going to put some of you in into poverty. Wow. Some something needs to be done. Look at sense. Look at it in a very real way. You need to do something about him, yeah. because anyhow he gets back in for another four years or what or whatever amount of years. Yes, yes. People won't be able to move around. And and you're right about that, Tinagari. If he gets in again, it's going to be really difficult because now he's going to feel that he's got the mandate to do anything that he wants to do. And um, Susan Hall. Um, I, I voted for her within the party sector to be the one. Is, that's her, that's her, yes, for the conservative, yeah. She's the one who's running for the conservative side to be the mayor of London. Uh, there are two persons. I, I voted for her and um, and uh, trust hopefully that she will win. She, she's a white lady, um, respective, but I believe that she can actually, she can really hold. Um, she, she said, she said, I will get rid of Ulez right away. Once she wins, she'll get rid of Ulez. I think it is so unfair. I think it's wicked. Anything that is heaping um, hardship on people at this time, it is the height of wickedness. I think it interest is. rates is wickedness. I think these 969 million in profits which they have made recently by these, bank, by these um, oil companies is a height of wickedness. And we need to say it. And people need to say it. You need to say it. You know, you need to write to your MPs and just say something needs to be done. Somebody says study cannibalize the housing sector. He increased average cost of housing. I mean, right now, you know what the conservative said? What's what what Rishi said? Sadiq has not delivered the houses, so he's gonna get and start to do that. The guy just walk around with his hand in his pocket, man. That's what he does. He walk around with his hand. So he walk around with his hand in his pocket that he said he can. And the, the Bank of England governor have a big belly and just say, oh, we're going to increase interest rate. It's hard to hear this you, see, you see, you see, the, the, um, the electorate has the greatest power. 
Yes. We have the power in our hands. You need to go out and vote. Mm. It's no sense sitting back in our chairs, in our homes, in the comfort of our homes, fussing and complaining that bills are high and this is high and profits are being made beyond the imagination. Yet when it comes around to get these people out, we either don't do it or we yeah. put the wrong people in. It's it's not it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It is not making sense at all. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to, I'm appealing to the London voters. Get Sadiq Khan out. Get him out of there. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to move anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Yes. 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 And, because and, 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 sorry, guys. Because on. because electric cars. He wants you to sell your car. Yes. Yes. Now, electric cars. I was listening to um, a gentleman who went out and bought an electric car. I've listened to a few, really. I've listened to quite a few. And each one that I've listened to, they've said that they're sorry they bought one. Because one says that he's in debt. He can't sell it. If he sold it, he's got to put so much thousands of pounds on it just to get rid of it so he can go back to his petrol car. Mm. One, another owner says that the journey that he has to take or that he took, well, takes ever so often, um, it works out that he pays more than he would for the petrol. Well, because on his way going to wherever he's going, he's got to charge before he gets there. When he gets to the destination, he's charging again. And when he leaves to go back home, he then has to charge so that he can get back home. And all of that works out to be more than just putting petrol in a car. These things, it's a money gimmick. And what people also have to understand, you know, is that the experts are saying that it is even more environmentally damaging in making the batteries anyway you know and it's it's um it's it's ludicrous all of these things and it's, it, they are going to at a switch at a, at a switch of a button they can they can turn your car off it's like yeah. with the test anytime they break down they you don't take it to a garage you know you just call tesla and Tesla, if you give them your number or your ID number, they then punch it into their system. They know who you are and they can diagnose the car from there. I mean, wow. you know, well, it's, well, it's ludicrous. It's all, well, so, a, it's all yeah. a controlled game, Silver. Yeah. It's all so read, yeah. What, what, what Ruan says on TikTok is that um, he did so at a time mass, Im mass immigration and free movement who took jobs and houses. That is... Um, well, Sadiq Khan, look at the volume of original Londoners who were forced out of a city. Electrical cars are only good when you generate electricity with solar panels. But, Gary, I was thinking again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking again, guys. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I just think with me on this point here. The £12.50 for you, Les, it is to stop you from actually coming to London or to make money. What if everybody just paid, Gary? Nothing changed, is it? All it's going to do is go in the coffers yeah. of the mayor. Well, that, that is all it does. But the point is, the mm. point is, is that, okay, you pay £12.50 a day when you use it. Yes? Yes. Plus you pay road tax. Yeah? Plus you're paying, um, plus plus the, 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 the gas in your car that that well that has gone down a little bit now but but you're still paying more over a period of time mm. than 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 you would at other times really <laughs> if that makes sense yeah 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 but well, if you're paying four pounds mm. 50 a day mm. calculate that over a year and there's some people who would who would more like to use that money for other things and there are some yeah. people that, that are parked right where the camera is. 
So the moment the car comes out of the drive, it's not that they've gone down the road, you know. The moment their car comes out of the drive, that's it, 12.50. Well. It's a rip-off, well, Merchant. It's, it's, it's a rip-off. Well, Gary, um, is it 12 pounds 50 for a day? Let's put um, 12 pounds 50. You're not going to put 352 days. So it's, it's, no, no, no. What I'm saying, there are people in London. Yeah. Who and at the same time, who are business people or or um, one man band, a one man band man, or you know, who who needs his vehicle? He hasn't got the money to go out there yeah. and buy a brand new electric vehicle. That's he true. uses his diesel or his petrol van yeah, to do that's true. to feed himself, to feed his family. Gas yeah. is, I mean, gas, natural gas is going through the roof. You know, British gas is making money off him. Yes. You know, electricity, food items going through the roof. Yes. His children going to school. Yes. And he can't even afford to heat his house. But yet, the moment he takes his van out onto the street, which he has to do five or six days for the week, he has to be paying £12.50. How much is that yeah. for the week? You know, it, it's it's not fair. These things are not fair. Yeah. Uh, someone, right. yeah. Someone said about ULEZ is that um they like it because one aspect of it they like is that it stop unregistered terrorists driving cars into London. But I have a different view to that because if you're a terrorist and you're gonna get your your brides, you're not gonna worry about paying twelve pounds fifty if that's the case. No. Yeah, I'm so quite I don't, sure. I don't, I don't think that's going to stop it. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I don't know the figures. We haven't got the facts, but I'm quite sure there's people who are driving in and out of London, and they haven't paid anything. Yes, yes, yes. There's no. They, they don't have any intention of paying anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Gary. Um, before we're going to before we go, um, just just a last one, and and the the last one is regarding Niger. I don't know if you heard about Niger. Um, our nigger, uh, Niger, whereby ruling party is attacked after President Bozum Osted. Supporters of a coup in Niger have attacked the headquarters of the Osted President Party, setting on fire, stoning and burning cars outside. Small group of arsonists had broken away from a large show of support for the coup leader outside Parliament, where Russian flags were on show. You know, Russia joined other countries and the UN in calling for Mr. Basum release. You know, Gary, I, I just think that one of the greatest powerful strength that we have, if it really pulled together, is the continent of Africa, which has the richest natural resources. You know, the richest natural resources. And unfortunately, been infiltrated. We wish all the best for Niger, Niger, Niger. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, it's just a pity that it seems to be so much. Yeah. So much problem is in that country, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Gary, listen. It was great. I'm supposed to do a, a discussion with uh, Matunda um, on the constitution between Jamaica. Um, but are we going to do it? We're going to do it. Um, we're supposed to do it tonight, actually, but not live. We're going to record it, um, going through the whole constitution aspect of it, and um, and and just break it down a bit uh, regarding the DPP as well. And and uh, tomorrow night, uh, the first discussion is going to take place at the town hall meeting. In uh, it's going to be in Nottingham. Nottingham is where it's going to take place tomorrow, which is going to be discussions on the Jamaica becoming a republic. You know what is very, what is very, what is the interesting thing, Gary, about this recent constitution change that the government did to to let Paula Lewin, the DPP, extend their time, is that it happened, Gary, at a time when Jamaica is also talking about reforming the constitution. 
So if they're talking about reforming the constitution, you should have actually put that in the mix. Anyway. That's just my view for that. That's another one coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for um, for joining tonight. And um, the, remember to like and subscribe. And I want to say to persons on Instagram and persons on Facebook and persons on YouTube, do like. My, my mind does always say, I need to say, do like and share the show. Let's have this conversation on a Wednesday, a Thursday night. Let's talk about these things which affect us, you know, because we cannot allow just the question time. We cannot allow just the BBC, the ITV to discuss these things. And then we're all gawking at them at times. We have prepared and we have platforms which we have created. I have created. And it is a platform that we can actually use to discuss these things. And the social media footprint can go very far when you bring things to the fore. And I believe that it's very opportune time that as a people and as a community, we actually put that great emphasis on ours, you know, at the same time. And no, you won't always agree on everything. No, you won't agree on everything. And that's the beauty of where we're at. So like and share and subscribe to the Silburn show. The copy go on to Silburn TV, lift the link and actually share it. And also what you can do as well, go on to the YouTube channel. Not the YouTube channel, go on to the the, the website www.silburn.com or www.silburn.co.uk. There's some t-shirts there, you can buy some. And you can also share the the discussions as well share it it has a lot of information there let's let's actually go one step further let's take it to the next level ladies and gentlemen my name is silver and Sidil. walk good and saturday night talk and sip as much as possible gary have a good night peace out <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great one. Peace out and bye-bye. Let's go.